Metal Nation. This is Podcast Them Down. I'm Tim. That's Matt. That's Doug. And uh, today I wanted to talk about this KK's Priest documentary. So KK Priest, KK's Priest is the band founded by KK Downing from Judas Priest after they wouldn't mm-hmm. let him back in the band. Okay. <laughs> and I, I would like to say that we're not going to talk about the controversy um especially you know he's a very famous author uh who wrote the harry potter books <laughs> and is notorious on twitter for certain views no, no, um, no, no, no. and we're someone we're else this is... oh <laughs> kk downing may be notorious on twitter but yeah <laughs> not for those views <laughs> yeah probably uh, and it should be noted, uh, I don't think we reviewed the the last record on this channel, but uh, very good. Um, thought it was just going to be a generic kind of like solo album that you hear on Caroline Records or something like that, Cleopatra. But no, it's actually really high quality and impressed with all the songs here. Yeah, we, we should give it a proper uh, review because I enjoyed it as well. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. There's no like, there's no Wikipedia page for KK's priest. There's just like a paragraph <laughs> on KK Downing's page. So, uh, basically, his his band has Tony Newton, AJ Mills, and former priest members Tim Ripper Owens, uh, oh, and Les Binks on vocals and drums. Okay. So, hmm. so Napalm Records put out this thing. They call it KK's Priest Documentary, The Return of KK Downing and KK's Priest. And it's what it's implying is like how they got together and how they set up the show. You, you know, they it's it's right before his first festival appearance, basically, right? And I was expecting this behind the scenes, like look at everything <laughs> but what this thing actually is is uh and and you two are just watching it now on mute i assume uh, <laughs> right? no i've watched no. it and well researched hey you know you know our mantra is uh no <laughs> no preparation no no preparation, no expectations. That's, That's right. The podcast I'm down with. That's what it says on the back of this shirt. <laughs> yeah, we just misspelled all those words. All right. So what <laughs> this really is is some B roll, and then mm-hmm. some backstage footage. Okay. So oh, that fucking ice. Oh my god. Oh yeah. yeah. Why can't you gate that out? Oh my god. Oh, I hate it. Hey man. I'm like KK Downing. I t- don't take no for an answer. Apparently, you do take no for an answer if you're KK Downing. Oh, you take you say I'll make my own. I'll make my own band with Tim Owens and hookers. <laughs> Allegedly, as a matter of fact, forget the band. Shockingly credible Judas Priest with probably more members at this point. So, <laughs> so it's. Uh, like I said, it starts with B roll and then it shows some backstage footage while they're just like killing time. So it has Tony Newton, the bassist. And I believe at one point he's complaining about how Scandinavians are too reserved. (laughs) And he says, it's because I, I know because I have a Danish girlfriend. Like, okay, that's a little weird. And then there's a bunch of like, uh, uh, Final Cut style, like film edits. So it goes, you know, mm-hmm. like uh, someone spliced some film together. And then the only one who says anything, like kind of coherent and put together and in the spirit of a documentary is Tim Owens. So he talked for a while about how he was in Priest. He let, he was, uh, let's, let's say, uh, asked to leave. <laughs> and then, then he mentions he was in Iced Earth. And then he was doing his solo stuff for a while uh, and continues to. And then Ken called him. So I love that he calls <laughs> KK Ken. And he yeah, refers to him as Ken several times. And uh, he's basically talking about how, you, you know, how great it is to be doing KK's Priest. 
Okay. So then, then it shows uh, the guitarist like warming up backstage, not KK Downing, though. <laughs> Someone else. Yeah, I know. Okay. So then, you missed the part where, where Tim Owens is like, uh, has like resistance bands or something. Yeah, I I haven't gotten there yet. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, no, let's let's jump ahead to that. <laughs> All right. So Tim's war- So Tim specifically says he doesn't do vocal warm ups backstage. What some you can clearly hear someone else doing <laughs> vocal warm ups, and they they address it. But then, yeah, to to I guess get pumped up for the show, he's he's got the resistance bands and he's. He's exercising, he shows off his muscles. <laughs> and then KK shows off his lack of muscles. Mm-hmm. And so this documentary has documentary has almost no talking to KK about like setting up the band and getting it. Yeah. It- <laughs> KK's looking like a blonde Dallas Cooper. It, he does. <laughs> Thank that that I was trying to figure out who he looked like, and that is exactly right. Absolutely. So it has him talking a bit, but then okay, so then he talks about it's like, well, we're backstage and we got a drink before the show, green tea. And then he goes and drinks some green tea. And it's like very underwhelming. Okay, and then <laughs> and then uh Tim talks. Some more because I feel like he's the only one who understands what they're trying to do here yeah. with the camera. And then they're getting ready yeah, to walk talk on about s- reserved people. You get the American up there to talk. Yeah. <laughs> he, and he even name dra- name drops Akron, Ohio, you know. And he also mentions Rockstar, the the movie that was loosely based on him. Mm-hmm. So we t- so this is more of a Tim Owens interview than anything yeah. than, than any of this KK's priest. And then it follows them on stage and then has a bunch of clips, you know. And um and that and the like it's like two thirds on the into the documentary where they start showing the live clips. So I'm just very confused why they called this a documentary and not like yeah. Just spliced it up into Tim Owens sound bites because they, you know, that's the high quality content they have here. And they got a bunch of live stuff, you know, just turn this into a bunch of uh, Instagram stories. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. It, and but I, I'm sure this like is a, all like napalms. They, they're like, you need to generate us a content, you know? Well, the, the whole lo- art of the, the EPK has just been lost. Absolutely. And it, like there are great live shots, but they're they're the audio is from the camera. <laughs> so, but there's there's a bunch of weird choices here. Like there's, I know you talked about kind of the filmy elements, but there's a bunch of digitally inserted film artifacts. Oh yeah, um, yeah. I mentioned I m- meant to mention that, but yeah. And it's just really distracting. I mean, it's <laughs> it it's almost. Like it's not it's it's not used as a wipe or a transition between scenes. It's often just randomly inserted. Like it's in the concert footage part. I'm like, what what does this do for anybody? Are are you highlighting the band? <laughs> like poor poor Tim Ripper Owens is trying to keep the narrative of the film going by being the only person actually participating rather than actively walking away from the camera, which is probably 40% of the shots, right. uh, people's backs of people's heads, people turning away, walking down hallways. Yeah, and I, I, I should also mention there's a, this, the running time of this is only 13 minutes. So it's, it's like that. This episode will probably be longer than the. Oh, uh, I, I think it probably already is. <laughs> yeah. Tim also failed to mention that this is free. Uh huh. You can watch it on YouTube. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I will have the. Uh, the link in the description. We should hold all the links hostage for the uh, yeah. We sh- we <laughs> for should the, for the Patreon. There's also just a lot of I don't know. I, there's some strange things going on here. Um, so it's on Napalm Death's uh, Instagram Na- or Napalm sorry uh, Records YouTube Napalm Records 
YouTube, which has 2.3 million subscribers, but it's only been out a couple of days, but it has something like 20,000 views, which seems really incongruous. Um, and, and I don't really understand that. This means that there's many, many people who are seeing this in their th feed and just going, yep, no, never mind. <laughs> Uh, the, the comments are all very positive because everyone is pumped that KK and T Tim Owens are doing the, the, you know, this band. So yeah. Uh, for example, uh, and it still sounds fresh. Yeah. KK and Tim don't get old and are making great music. This band is amazing. Oh, and Tim Owens sounds amazing because he always sounds amazing and always will. Right. <laughs> so, uh, uh, next one by Xkiller85. <laughs> uh, great. Both KK and Ripper are back on the scene. This band kicks ass. Uh, and then, let's see. There was another one. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Patricio Isara4529 says, KK Downing Dios de la Guitarra y el Metal. <laughs> 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 yeah, but... Did they delete everything that says, what the hell is this video? It has, n <laughs> it has nothing to do with anything. So, um, there's one more thing I wanted to mention about, about this. All the clips, lots of them were Judas Priest songs. So that I, w I was like, well, what the, which is, uh, what did they play? So again, this was their first show. This was back in July at KK Steel Mill, because of course it was. I wonder how they got booked there. <laughs> they, uh, their set is, uh, they played, let's see, 15 songs. Nine of them <laughs> were Judas Priest songs. So if you came, if you bought the new album, if you bought Simmons of the Sinner, you only heard four of the songs, and then they, they, fell back on the Judas Priest stuff, and I can't decide if I like that or not. Well, yeah. I'll say that's a, a way higher, both in uh, true count and percentage of, uh, of KK's Priest songs than they ever played at the Ripper era stuff. Yeah. Even on, like, the showcase shows back in Priest. Yeah, so they do play Burn in Hell. Which is yeah, it's probably what people want. Yeah, which is uh, blood stained. Was that on? Was that on demolition or jugulate? That was jugulator. jugulator. Yeah. Uh, so th they open with Hellfire Thunderbolt, great song. One more shot at glory. I like that, but they. I feel like they should play one shot at glory first. <laughs> yeah. Play one more shot at glory. Or, or a bookend. Yeah. Uh, they do the Ripper. They did an unreleased song, "Reap the Whirlwind." or at least it was unreleased at the time. They do Nightcrawler, Sermons of the Sinner, one of the KK's Priest songs. Then they do Burn in Hell, Beyond the Realms of Death, Hell Patrol. Um, and then they do Brothers of the Road, which is about KK's Priest, even though it's their first time on the road. <laughs> and then Metal Meltdown, The Green Man, Alishi with the Two-Pronged Crown, Breaking the Law, Victim of Changes, and then the uh, Encore was another KK's Priest song. So there you go. That's, they're they're really leaning into the heavy priest. Yes, mm -hmm. they are. Yeah. So, uh, Hell Patrol, Metal Meltdown. You know. So at first, I like I saw I saw this and I'm like Judas Priest. Was, I think it's funny that Cake and Downing, you know, like wrote a lot of these songs and it <laughs> says Judas Priest cover, Judas Priest cover. It's, is it a cover though? I mean, legally, I, I guess it is. One person. The yeah. person playing it is credited. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I was annoyed, but then I, I like, I was like, that's, that seems disingenuous, you know, just come here, Judas Priest. But, uh, after seeing what they played, I think it's actually a good mix of Judas Priest songs and a good mix of KK's Priest songs because you're only listening to K. No one's, I feel like the number of people getting into KK's Priest because it's KK's Priest is very small 
compared to the number who are getting into KK's priest because it's Judas priest, you know? Right. Exactly. It's at least 40% Judas priest. <clears throat> yeah. I, I think they got For rid of the drum. Never having played a live show. I think that's a very high percentage mm-hmm. and it's a high impact set. Yeah. So their most recent set was at uh bloodstock in August. And, uh, they played fewer songs, but it's mostly, uh, it's again, eight covers and then eight covers. <laughs> yeah. Then three tracks off sermons of the sinner. And then two other, what are, what are the other? I don't know. Prob- probably one of the unreleased songs. So there you go. KK's priest and the well, documentary. That's not worth your time. Before we go, there are a few more um, uh, uh, comments I'd like to shout out. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the first one and uh, is from user FJ1PQ8ME7W. And he says, you know who is kicking ass live? Ross the Boss from Manowar. Hell yes! I'm not, I'm not sure. I mean... That's true. So Ross the, what is Ross the Boss, he does the same thing now that you bring it up. Uh, so let's see. His most recent. Yeah, it's somehow both trolly and completely relevant. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Is, uh, oh, I, I guess it depends on the set. Because I was going to say he. Uh, oh, man. No, setlist.fm is having a hard time coming up with... Here we go. All right, so Ross the Boss plays entirely Manowar songs when he performs. Okay. I mean, that's so, incredible. That, yeah. so, Why wouldn't he? It, but, but so he, his last show, July 9th, in, in Folkets Park in Sweden, um, <laughs> he played 12 covers <laughs> According to, to my, wow. uh, set list. So we did Blood of the Kings, which is a weird one to open with, in my opinion. That's that's not a great opening song. The Oath, Sign of the Hammer, Thor the Powerhead, Wheels of Fire, Kings of Metal, Black Wind, Fire and Steel, Heart of Steel, Battle Him, Kill with Power. I paused so you could say Die, Die, but you fuck with Die, me. Die. Thank you. Fighting the World and Hail and Kill. Like, yeah, like, uh, KK's Priest has a dash of... Here's some new stuff. Here's here's like how, how Judas Priest would be going if I was in charge. You know, <laughs> there's some of that. I like how the structure of Man of War is such that by reading that set list, you actually created a new Man of War songs lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, wait! I got it on the thing. I got it. <laughs> Okay, so the next comment uh, is, is an exchange where they're talking about other guys booted out from bands forming their new band names. So the best one is David Lee's Halen, <laughs> but <laughs> they've also suggested Dave Mustaine's Alica and Ozzy's Bath. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Okay, and then finally, as a great exchange between Erebos007 and some other people, uh, Erebos says, Whoa, what happened to Tim Owens? Sick slash diet? He lost and a bunch of weight. Re- That's what I... He, he well, went to hey, the gym. That's what he did. Chase Mathis2016 says, He lost weight. He's also 56, so he's aging. Oh. <laughs> and then... And the- <laughs> And then I like Goyle's replies, exercising and eating healthy. Good for him. <laughs> Good for him. Because he got a little chubble, chubby the past couple of years. Oh. And then <laughs> and then Erebus replies, I'm old now and did not see him for a long time, but I'm relieved he's not sick. <laughs> <laughs> also, uh, it's hard to see, but on their little their little collapsible table in the documentary uh-huh. backstage. They got what, what must have been on their tour rider. There is an empty juice thing, so like oh. orange juice or, or lemonade or something. There is an unfinished container of blueberries. Oh, look at that. Yeah. <laughs> there is what appears to be like crackers. Or like healthy chips. <laughs> yeah. And then there is a bucket. See, I was thinking, I was thinking, (laughs) a 
a ripper and losing weight. There was a bucket with the Monster Energy logo on it. It's like, that's where the weight came from. He was drinking Monster yeah. Energy all the time. And I assume still is. Probably one of the oh, wow. calorie-free Monster Energies. You know, Probably I'm disappointed. Yeah. yeah, I don't know well, if he's well, lost that sponsorship. <laughs> they didn't eat any of those blueberries. I hope they started recording the interviews just just when they got in there because otherwise those blueberries are going to waste well maybe they're crappy blueberries you have you ever had a crappy blueberry <laughs> oh yeah like <laughs> like it's just a sour shit blueberry like uh i'm not eating any fucking these anymore yeah yeah the, I, I i think we need to get to the bottom of this so we're <laughs> i also like Can how we, the room they're in add the that room to they're the in list, contains add that to the list of questions we're going to ask tim owens when we when we interview them, what was wrong with the blueberries? Yeah. How were they? Also, the room they're in contains at least two oscillating fans. Yeah. Poor ventilation. <laughs> Maybe the blueberries are stinking up the place. Oh, no. yeah. Oh, that's a, I bet that's it. They, <laughs> they, they went off. I'm going to put durian on my, on my rider. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Fuck yeah. That'd be good for, uh, the, the food episode in person we're going to do one of these days. Oh, hell yeah. I don't want to give Make it away. and milkshake. Mm. Rancid blueberries. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, I think that's it. All right. Well, until next time, Metal Nation, there are two Judas Priests. How fucking lucky are we? Cast! Medium. The answer is medium lucky. <laughs> and zero nevermores. <laughs>